Uh, I'm here today to talk about Operation Persist. Uh, Operation Persist commenced on the 1st of March 2015 and in effect it was a strategy to look at unsolved homicides and in a more general sense cold case homicides. So the operation was all about um, bringing to the fore all of those matters that in our terms to be a cold case homicide had been unsolved for a period of longer than 12 months. Some of those matters dated back to the 60s and in total we had around 111 uh, unsolved homicides that were part of this operation. So it was a strategy that was designed to get these matters back before the public. Uh, we know that public information is critical to solving some of these homicides and in effect our successes to date have been two of those matters have resolved with people being convicted of cold case homicides and we currently have a further four matters before the courts. We very much appreciate the assistance of Crime Stoppers South Australia and the Office for the Commissioner for Victims' Rights and also the Department for Correctional Services. That, uh, those agencies have come on board with South Australia Police uh, as part of this overall strategy where we've designed playing cards with the faces of each of these homicide victims to put those cards into prisons and give them a more public arena through the Office um, of the Commissioner for Victims' Rights. We've also in installed TV screens in Department for Correctional Facilities. Again, just highlighting these matters and the assistance that we're seeking to bring people to justice and make them accountable for their actions, but also to provide some assurance to the family and friends of these victims that we have not forgotten them, that we will continue to investigate their matters, and again, we seek the public support in doing that. We're also very fortunate that uh, the Forensic Science SA Centre uh, received additional support and we have been very successful in the back capture of DNA material and also the analysis of DNA material from many of these homicide matters. The operation is really being reinvigorated today. Uh, a public campaign has not resolved. Um, that has been continuing since 2015 and will continue but today is about talking about the operation again with the release of new playing cards and uh, at this stage I'll hand over to the Chief Executive for the Department for Correctional Services, Mr David Brown. Thank you, Scott. Uh, the Department for Correctional Services is absolutely committed to this partnership, uh, not only with SAPOL uh, but with the Victims of Crime Commissioner and our Crime Stoppers. Uh, we believe uh, that the people coming into contact with our system uh, may have information that will assist SAPOL to resolve these uh, long-standing unsolved crimes and to give some closure uh, to the victims of those crimes. Uh, every year more than 6,000 people pass through our prison system and more than 7,000 people are under supervision in the community uh, on any given day. Uh, Operational Persist provides those people with uh, a conscience jogger, a reminder that these cases remain unresolved and uh, that they may have that one piece of information that fits into a puzzle that SAPOL are building uh, in their investigations. And uh, uh, the TV screens in our waiting rooms for visitors entering our prisons or for offenders reporting to community correction centres for supervision or the playing cards that prisoners are using in their recreation time just act as a constant reminder that there's no closure for the, the victims of these crimes and that if they hold information in relation to those crimes that uh, there is a process, a safe process available for them uh, to resolve, uh, to provide that information uh, to SAPO. Uh, we look forward to the next phase of, of the operation and any assistance we as a department uh, can provide. And I'm happy to hand over to Bronwyn. Sharon. Sharon. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Sharon Hanlon from Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers knows that really when it comes to cold case murders in particular, it's most likely that information coming forward to resolve one of those cases will come from somebody who's intimately involved with the criminal fringe or indeed is a family member or a friend of somebody who's on the criminal fringe. So the tactics that have been talked about um, in terms of the refresh of Operation Persist, which has been going for some time, by providing 
playing cards to inmates in prisons by installing TV screens in correctional services, waiting areas um, are really important tactics that keep these issues top of mind and are directed to our target audiences in particular. Likewise, Crime Stoppers plays a very important role um, when we're thinking about these target audiences because the platforms that we provide in terms of allowing that trusted link between the community through us onto the South Australian Police does provide an assurance of anonymity should someone wish to go down that path. Um, so I think that we are incredibly pleased to continue to support Operation Persist. We've been um, involved with it for a number of years and, um, and we're very hopeful that tactics such as these, which are considered unique, some of them are groundbreaking, they haven't been tried elsewhere, but we do know that they will um, hopefully give us, as, um, as the Commissioner said, um, a, a, an additional piece to the puzzle and hopefully resolve some of these very long-standing crimes. So now it's my pleasure to hand over to Bronwyn Kilmire, who is the Commissioner for Victims of Crime. Thanks, Sharon. So um, I'm very pleased to support the initiatives because it, anything that helps to seek uh, light on crimes that have remained unsolved for a long time is positive for victims. As you know, I'm speaking on behalf of victims. Um, imagine never knowing what really happened to a loved one. Um, the uncertainty of that can be devastating for families and friends. Somebody holds the, the key to the puzzle. It might be just a tiny little bit of information and often it's the people, as has been said, that are on the fringe of crimes. So we really uh, support this and because Operation Persist can help those families and friends to recover and our hope is that it will encourage people to come forward and shed some light and help them recover from the crimes. Thank you. Questions for us? So when um, did those TV screens go in? Can you tell us which prisons they were? Or which prisons? So the screens are going into a number of prisons, including the Adelaide Remand Centre, Mobilong, Yatla and uh, Port Lincoln Prison. And they're also going into a number of our community correction centres. In fact, our busiest community correction centres, uh, facilities like Adelaide Community Correction Centre and Elizabeth as two examples. And have they, have they already been in there for a little while or is, are they new? Uh, that they're new, so they are just being installed. I think some of them have already been installed, um, but they're relatively new to this next phase of Operation Persist. That's the case, yes. So our objective is to remove all of your traditional playing cards and to replace them with the cards for Operation Persist. And uh, uh, my information from the staff on the front line is that that certainly hasn't reduced the number of card games being played. So they are being used by the prisoners uh, in their downtime. Um, would you be able to speak to, sorry, Mr. Dibble, the, um, the two cold case notices that were resolved? Yes. Would you just be able to confirm which ones they are? Certainly. Uh, the first one was uh, Dale McCauley. Uh, Dale was murdered in 1998 at Wollonga. Uh, his body had not previously been recovered and a person was uh, convicted for his murder and has been sentenced to 15 years for that murder. And uh, pleasingly, Dale's body was recovered as part of that investigation. Uh, the second one was Jason Doles, who was murdered near Lobethal in 2012. And again, an unsolved homicide. Uh, three people and an accomplice were arrested for that murder and they were convicted and are uh, serving varying prison sentences. For the families and the officers involved in those investigations, um, what kind of response does that, those results get? Uh, there's a lot of hard work that goes into it and uh, from a, a victim's point of view, I think there's, whilst it's absolutely devastating to lose a family member, um, there can be some solace out of the fact that uh, people are held accountable for that murder and are now serving a term of imprisonment. So. We can never undo what's done, uh, but I think from a point of view of a long-term investigation and a successful outcome um, is something that's pleasing for the police, um, but at the same time, we acknowledge what had happened in the first instance. With those six cases, um, I'm not sure if you have this information available, but how important was information received from prisoners um, in um, getting those two to resolution and before, before the court? Uh, I can't talk about the specific cases, but generally we've had over 80 calls uh, out of prisoners in the correctional system. 
Uh, again, as Mr Brown said, um, it's one of our strategies that um, you know, people in a criminal environment often know about other things that go on in a, in a criminal environment. So that part of the strategy, which is, again is only one portion of it, has been very successful. Uh, and again, we appreciate the support of correctional services in allowing the police information to be put up and pretty much at the forefront of every prisoner's life. They are seeing these things day in, day out. And uh, if that triggers a, uh, a conscience vote by them uh, to make contact with the police, but certainly we do know that over 80 prisoners have made contact with us. And do you expect there's a lot more than that that haven't come forward yet? I think so. Um, we're dealing with, as I said, around 111 cold case murders here. So it extends over a significant period of time. We go back to the 60s. So we look at a 50 year period and uh, some of those people have been in and out of the prison system over that time. Um, so we would certainly be confident that there is still a vast amount of information within the prison system as there would be within the general community. So again, that encouragement for people to contact Crime Stoppers, it can be done anonymously and uh, we will follow everything through. Um, and as we've seen, these things never rest. Um, Do you have some valuable outcomes as well from the DNA testing that you've taken as well? Yes, we have, yes. So there are still some matters before the court, so I can't talk about individual ones, but certainly the analysis of DNA, either a comparison against the DNA database or a resubmission of exhibits that uh, were taken back at the time, perhaps at a time when the DNA wasn't advanced as of what it is now. So the support of Forensic Science SA, again, has been invaluable. And uh, it's about joining all those different parts of the puzzle that come together. So DNA is one of those very good advancements in technology that's allowing us to solve some of these long-term homicides. I'm confident that we will still see some results to come. Some of these cases are very difficult and complex to solve and some of them perhaps people who have information that we didn't have at the time, we may never get. So I will say that some of them will remain unsolved, but I'm very confident that we will have a number that will be solved and those people will be brought to justice. Can you say which cases in particular you think you're on the cusp of maybe making an arrest or a breakthrough in? I uh, prefer not to just for the operational side. I mean, as I said, we've still got four before the courts uh, that are cold case homicides and a number to come in terms of we have some very positive lines of investigation for some of those cases. So at the right time, I, I will. Uh, but at this point in time, all I'd do is encourage anyone who hasn't contacted the police to do that through Crime Stoppers because that piece of information may be critical to solving one of these long-term homicides. Yes. How confident of that one, uh, you know, last time that that case failed, uh, when it was first before the court, which was shortly after it obviously happened, are you confident that that will end up being one of the means involved, maybe? Yes. Yes. I believe we put a very good brief of evidence um, to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. Uh, and again, um, we believe we've put our best case forward. And for that reason, I'll leave it to the courts to make the decision. Uh, still a very active investigation. Obviously, we have made an announcement that um, that murder was connected to other murders. Um, so that, in terms of uh, an active investigation, is still there and still very much a high priority. Do you still have one main suspect in mind at this, at this stage? We have a suspect, um, but I can't... It's still an active investigation, so I, I can't go into too much detail. I'm sorry. Final questions? In relation to this operation with the cards and the, the television screens, is South Australia the first uh, state to implement these or is there another um, you know, state that has seen success from these um, measures? We're the first state to implement it as an overall strategy. Um, the playing cards themselves are, are very valuable, but it is, again, part of a bigger piece of the, the tactics that are used for Operation Persist. So being extremely valuable, um, and I think we have shown other states what is possible if you invest some time into some cold case homicides and what results may be able to be achieved. Are there any long term, um, I guess, projects that you're hoping to implement in prisons in relation to these strategies? Anything um, that, you know, would take time to develop and that, that you're looking at at the moment? Uh, 
in relation to the cards and the screens? I think the cards and the screens are a start because, as I said, it puts before prisoners in their daily life um, that these people are victims of homicide. And uh, some of these people are in there for a range of offences. Um, but the strategy will still continue in terms of how we get as much information as possible out to the community. It's not something we've previously done before in terms of saying there's a population that's confined. Um, but the strategy is not just for prisons, it's also for the general community and very much the playing cards become the face of the victims of these offences. So in terms of where the strategy goes, we're constantly looking at ways, different ways of doing it and what sort of results may be able to be achieved. Okay. The, um, sorry. Uh, the, the concept behind the DNA database was to, at times when some of these people were convicted of a murder, the DNA legislation wasn't in force. So there is some retrospectivity to DNA legislation that allowed us to back capture that DNA and then put it onto the DNA database. That database is then compared against crime scenes around Australia. And that was Robert Sabaki's, is that one of those in the Operation Pacific that was linked to that particular um, Yes, yes. So in terms of, a, again, a, a general sense of the DNA analysis of exhibits, um, because the, the advancements in DNA have been quite profound. So re-lodging an exhibit from a, a cold case homicide some years ago can produce a very different result today than it may have a few years ago. So the analysis of exhibits coupled with getting as many people as possible's DNA on the database lawfully is again one of the strategies that has been used. Okay, thanks, Thank you.